Thank you for joining us for another Slido. Thank you for joining us for another Slido questions and responses. These questions come from the message on May 21st, uh, in which we finished our first Peter series and talked a lot about glory and suffering. And so a lot of these questions are coming from a place of, man, what do I do when I'm hurting? Here's the first question. What is the key to focus on the glory instead of lamenting in my suffering? Seeing the hope is very difficult. I've got five things. Number one, glory is not the absence of suffering, but the presence of Christ in suffering. Jesus did not dis spurn the cross. He did not avoid it, but he went directly toward it for you. And in suffering, in the suffering of Jesus, we see the glory of God on full display. If you want to see God's glory, look at Jesus on the cross crucified for you. Number two, in the question, the person says, instead of lamenting in my suffering. Now, I think what they're trying to say is like getting stuck in my suffering, getting stuck in um, focusing on that. But I want to talk about lamenting as a spiritual practice. Lamenting, when properly done, is a great way to bring our pain and our heartache to Jesus. Jesus understands your pain and he can take all of it on his shoulders. Don't fear to lament, but run towards it. Now, how can I lament well? And this is going to also get into some of the other questions, but my favorite way is Psalm 13. The first four verses are these hard verses where the psalmist is like questioning God, like, God, where are you? I'm going to die here. And I think in those four verses, we can either use the psalmist words or supplement some of our own, even in a harsh, salty language, to really bring our true pain, um, fear, anger, hurt, um, bring it all to God in prayer. And then the psalmist concludes with the final two verses, but I will trust in you because you have been good to me. And then my recommendation is after praying through Psalm 13, go and pray through Psalm 23 as a palate cleanser. I think that is the best way to lament. Number three, hope sometimes feels impossible. The surest focus for our hope is Jesus walking out of the grave, defeating death. Jesus defeated death for you. Jesus defeated suffering for you. Jesus defeated sin for you. And sometimes in our weakness, we might know that here, but we don't feel it here. And in our weakness, we say, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Number four, get with other brothers and sisters that you trust in the faith and get real with them. As the body of Christ, we should bear one another's burdens. Do not treat this faith like a solo race. Uh, number five, Jesus shows up in bread and wine with his body and his blood for you. At communion, Jesus is making another promise to save and to rescue you. Here's this moment in time where you are can point to that's outside yourself that Jesus has made a promise to rescue. And I encourage you, seek communion as often as you can. We have it every week here at Redeemer. Okay, those were five uh, responses to get through suffering. Um, here's the next question. What do you personally do when you are going through times of suffering? Do you embrace suffering well? Why or why not? <laughs> Sounds like an essay question. Uh, I hate going through suffering. There's nothing about suffering that I enjoy or want to embrace. And sometimes suffering brings me to a dark place of depression and suicidal ideation. I'm just being real. It's in these dark moments that I need God the most. When I'm handling suffering well, I'm turning to God, lamenting my pain and my struggles. I'm being authentic and vulnerable with trusted people around me. When I handle it poorly, I 
I isolate myself and I try to anesthetize myself with meaningless diversions. Now, if you are facing a difficult time of suffering uh, in your life, here are three areas to consider. One, spiritual. Lament your pain using Psalm 13 and Psalm 23, as I mentioned before. Number two, emotional. Open up to a Christian brother or sister who you trust. Bearing one another's burdens is a natural part of the Christian life. And number three, physical. Explore possible strategies to get your body on target. Sometimes we have chemicals that are messed up that need some help getting balanced. Sometimes what we need is a prayer walk outside in the sun. Um, if you've never done a prayer walk, the, it's, it's so easy. All you do is you just walk around with your eyes open. And when you see something, it reminds you of something. And then you just pray about that thing, whatever comes to mind. So you see a tree and say, thank you, God, for shade in the summer. I really love that. Or, or, or you see the grass in the field. Lord, thank you for, for beauty and for rain. And water. Whatever comes to mind, you just pray about it. And especially prayers of gratitude. So I, I would say that that... It sounds so stupid. Taking a walk outside and praying, I think it can go a really long way to get your physical body in a place where you want it to be. Okay, um, this person is going to reference a, a thing I said, and, and I've said this more than once, and I really believe it. We hear it said, God doesn't give you more than you can handle. And... And I think it's much better said, God never gives you more than what he can handle. And so this person's kind of asking a follow-up to that question. So they say, in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, uh, God won't let you be tempted more than what you're able. Isn't that the same as saying God will never give you more than you can handle? Okay, so let me respond. I'm, number one, overly precise. Um, just ask Leah. God, so when it comes to this, God is the one in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, who is providing a way out from temptation. In the hardness of our hearts, we continue on in sin. So God, so going back to this idea, it's not that I am able to handle the sin in myself. It's that God is the one who is providing the way out for me to escape out of. Okay, so much in life, uh, we experience things that are so much more than what we can handle in ourselves. Pain and suffering of every kind. We ask God to show up and to carry us through. In our own strength, we fail. But it's in our weakness that God's strength is made perfect in us. God in 1 Corinthians 10, 13 is providing a way out of temptation, and that is extremely encouraging. Even in temptation, we don't have to rely on our own willpower, but on relying on God that he will provide an escape hatch. It also leaves us without excuse when we do sin. So to me, avoiding temptation, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and bearing suffering on our own are two different things. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. Love to hear your thoughts. Please reach out. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.